How you feeling? Great. Good? Yeah. So what do you think about when you're here in MGM Grand Arena? I think you got a couple experiences here. First of all, what's up, guys? How are you? Uh, this is... Uh, I fight on this arena twice. And, you know, it's like... It's, it's not a good place for you to joke too much, you know. It's, like, it's not a good place to joke too much. So, with, me, with me. Oh, for you. Uh, for you not to joke or for me not to joke? No, no, I think for you to for... joke with me. <laughs> 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 Even it's not KJ, it's like, right. it's a little bit still dangerous. So am I safe though, or is there still a chance <laughs> that there's danger for me? This is depends on you. This is, this is depends. <laughs> okay, so. Um, how many have, how many have, have seen him fight many times? How many guys have seen the fights with him? Okay. We can, we can talk about the fighting, but we were, we were having conversation in the back and you had a chance to meet my father. You met my, uh, uh my, uh, my wife. Um, you met the kids, you met the family, you met the friends. My relationship with my dad is very, very important to me as a father and a son. And I come from the Middle East as well. What role did your father play in your life in the way you look at life? You know, was, uh, <clears throat> my father was for me is like, uh, he was, first of all, he was my father. Second, he was my coach. And we spent all my life, I spent time with him. Even when we was on training camp, like, you know, it was like at home, at the gym, like everywhere, I was with my father. And uh, he was like my friend, you know, I, it was like very, very close relationship with him, you know, and, uh, and the father was like everything for me. He, he was in the military and he was very much a disciplinarian when you study kind of what his background was. Was his style of father, you know, relationship with you, was he a friend from the beginning or was he first trying to discipline you, turn you into a man and then became a, a father-son friendship? Like, was he a guy that would say, I love you, son? You know, would he kiss you on the cheek or would he kiss you on the head? Was he like that kind of a father? Was a lot of discipline? Uh, it's like in our culture, it was like, it's very hard to hear from father, oh, I love you. It's very hard. It's uh, because it's our culture, but we show our kids we love you. It's like I talk about when I was like 15, 16. Of course, when I was like baby, he said to me it's a lot. But when you become like 15, 16, when you become like man, you know, it's like it's like I say like before. It's like a lot of people joke with me. It's like love make your heart weak. You know, it's like you know what I'm talking. Not agree. Do I what? You are not agree. Do I not agree? <laughs> yeah. I think I agree. No, I talk about like love make your heart weak. Yes. No? Love make your heart weak? <laughs> I'm joking. Right? Okay. By the way, and, uh, it, there's one thing about the Habib I got to tell you guys on the back. I, you know, you <laughs> see him, you think he's very serious, but there's a, you know, there's a very uh, low-key underground funny side to you. The people that are close to you, do you have a sense of humor or is like, do you keep that to yourself? It depends like how I feel energy. Okay. Like if I feel good energy with you, I can joke. I respect it. Because... Go back to uh, with Pops. Yeah, it's like when I was like growing, like I realized like father is my like real friend. Like when I was like 15, 16. Before that, I was thinking like, well, this guy, why this guy pushed me too much? You know, it's like too much training, this, wrestling with the bears, like animals, like doing all this stuff. And I was competing in all sports, amateur, you know, like freestyle wrestling, Greek Roman, Greek playing like combat sambo, like I was competing in everywhere, like judo. And uh, like when I become like 15, 16, I become like very close with father. I realize like his system, I understand what he wants from me. I understand like everything and we become like very close. Before that, maybe, maybe because of like different of age or maybe I was like teenager, like I don't know. Before that, I was like, of course, I was following all his rules, but most of the time, I was disagree with him, and uh, and like 15, 16, I realized there is no freedom of speech between you and, and your parents. There is no freedom of speech. No freedom. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? Where you're you're kind of like 
you know what? A lot of this stuff my dad's been telling me has been right. You know, when I thought he was wrong, I'm, you know, this guy knows what he's talking about. Was there a moment for you there or was that around the 15, 16 age? No, it was like around 15, 16. 15, 16 age. Maybe 14, I don't remember, like, like 14, 16. Like, Makes sense. Yeah. And, and what were some of the values you picked up from him? Meaning, like, was there a set schedule? Was there like, you know, you got to do this, you got to be respectful, you got to train? What were some values? Because it's very obvious when I watch you or even in interviews or even the way you fought Connor, which we'll get into here in a minute, it's extremely obvious there is a couple things no one can disrespect with you, whether it's your faith and your father. In order to have that kind of loyalty, everybody has it, but to have it the level that you have it, there's got to be a certain level of admiration. What were some things your dad taught you that stuck with you at a young age? It's like about me, like all my life, I have schedule, you know. I have rules, I have discipline. And for me, it's all about numbers, you know. I have to do most of them, like all things, like on time. Like you have to wake up on like six, seven, you have to train after you come home, breakfast, go to school, come back, do homework, train, come back, eat, sleep, repeat. It's like this. You know, like a lot of people think like to become world champion, to become the best in the world. It's not easy thing. You know, you have to be like full, you have to be focused on all your life. It's like, it's about sacrifice, like about 30 years. Like next month, I'm gonna be like 35. I I find myself on mats when I was like three, four. I don't remember like exactly what, but I beginning walk on the mats because when we was living in village, my father opened uh, gym, first gym in uh, in our house, and he begin train like guys from village. You know, I was like three or four years, and since that time, like all my life. I was training by my father and no, no day off, you know. I remember like all my life I was in the gym. And of course, father teach me like my religion, father teach me discipline, rules, and uh, number one things, it was respect. You have to respect gym, you have to respect coaches, you have to respect your sparring partners, you have to respect all people, you cannot fight in the street because you know how to hurt people. It was like all about respect, you know. And when somebody tried to like bully me or disrespect me, and this is not a good idea, I think. <laughs> How old were you uh, when the first time you knew you were dangerous? Like meaning, like for a person to fight you, like you know you have access to certain skill sets that could really hurt somebody. I think it was 17 or 18. Got it. Uh, that time, because I'm from, I'm from Dagestan, and we have traditional like, like most of the old kids they train, like doing some martial arts, like wrestling, boxing, judo, like whatever. But everybody train. Even like when you go to the school in your class, you have like 15 people like who can give you a hard fight. <laughs> it's like become competition every day. Go to school and come back, you know. But I, I, I grew up with my brothers and uh, they all was training and uh, I have, of course, I have big support always, but anyways, you know, like, when you fight, you fight, you fight alone and uh, it was like big experience to growing in Dagestan, like between like 13th and 20th, I remember it was like too much fight in, uh, in street. And when I was like 17 or 18, like I realized I, I can hurt, like I can really hurt people and I remember like father told me like, you cannot fight in street because I teach you all, all life how to, how, to, how to become world champion. And when you become 18, 19, when you can hurt people, you have to control yourself. It's very dangerous. This is almost the same thing like gun. You have gun and you have to control yourself. And uh, yeah, around like 17, 18. Yeah, I, I can, I was asking you in the back, I said, you know, I can only imagine if somebody just sees you, maybe they don't recognize who you are and they had one too many drinks and they try to pick a fight with you and what you tell them. Has that ever happened? Where somebody doesn't know who you are, they're A couple of times happened here in the US, but um, my hometown, like they all know me. It's like almost like, I never have problem like, but here a couple of times I have that. What do you tell them? Do you say- I tell them brother, I can smash your face. Like, <laughs>
You have to be. You have to calm down. You just tell them very straight up. Yeah, it was 2000. It was 2012 when I just moved to California. When I just signed with UFC, my English was like my English was not good, and uh, it was between my gym and the hotel. It was like five minutes walking, and it was between. It was like supermarket, and every day I go inside, buy something, come, and one old lady on Casa, they, she know me. And I was waiting on the line, and one drunk guy, he tried to bully me. He's like, was maybe 35 on that time, like 35 to 40. He was a big guy, and he tried to bully like everybody. He was drunk, and, uh, and I told him, well, well, you have to be careful, like, because it's not a good idea to joke with me. Did he believe you? No, he, he just stopped and he realized this is real talk. <laughs> and he left me alone. He left you alone. I love it. Um, uh, Habib, was he selling you the dream that one day you're going to be a champion where you wanted to do it? Or was he setting the expectation, here's what you're going to do? Do you know what I'm asking? Like, was he saying, imagine one day you're going to be a champion, you're going to hold the belt, you're going to be yeah. so proud. For, or what he, was he saying, no, as a family, this is what we do. Out of our city, we're eagles. This is the, what was he selling you? No, no, no. It's like when just since like first day I signed UFC, like in my mind, I was, I was UFC champion. Like it was no way somebody can stop me. And father always told me, only one thing can stop you if like, I think it's like lucky punch. Otherwise, if you're not gonna stop train like you train now, if you're gonna still focus, I don't think somebody can stop you because you can wrestle, you can punch, you can do all these things all night. You know, you have good conditioning, you have big heart. I think you can, you can become world champion, just you have to be focused. And uh, like, not only just he say, I truly believe this too. You know, it's like, uh, like I was inside my heart, I was like, uh, I was competitive. Like even now, even I still like, uh, I believe I can beat like anybody in the world. Even now I'm not old. A lot of people forget about why I retired. Not, become, not because I become old. It was because I, my, I lost my father because he passed away and I don't wanna do this without him. And uh, that's why I stopped. Not because I become old. I'm only 34 years old, you know this. You check my birthday and uh, September 28, 88. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was I was competitor since I think like since when I was born. You know, many people, many people they train like 10, 15, 20 years. They have good skills. They can they know how to wrestle, punch, kick, everything. But inside they are not warriors. They are professional, but they are not warriors. You know, when you when you professional and you inside your heart you are warrior. These kind of people can become like, can become champions and defend their title, like being the best in the world. I want to I want to come back to that. Um, I know when when it comes down to athletes, you like. You're a big, I believe, Muhammad Ali fan. I think you're a Michael Jordan fan, and I think you like Ronaldo. If I'm not mistaken, those are some of the athletes you like, right? And in an interview, you know, hey, if you could meet anybody, who would it be? You said Michael Jordan, right? And then you said, when you were doing your documentary, I believe you said, uh, one of my friends told me to watch The Last Dance. He said, I already knew he was the greatest, but I didn't know his whole story. Then I, when I watched The Last Dance, I really realized who he was and I wanted to meet him. So it's a tricky question for you, okay? I don't want this to lead to a so fight, but okay. I'm gonna ask you. Go ahead, let's go. Um, Michael wins three. You've seen all 10 episodes? Then he loses, then he wins three. Then he loses. No, no, he, he wins three, then he his cares. dad dies, and he retires. Yeah. Okay. He Keep retires, going. and then his second drive was he made a comeback because it was to fight for him on his second time around of coming back. You're a very intuitive guy. When you watch that documentary, did that scene when he comes and he holds the thing and he's on, you know what I'm talking about, when he's on the floor in tears, crying, did any thought cross your mind to say like, 
what if I come one back one more time? Got, you know, Dad, should I come back? And did you did that ever cross your mind? No. Like, first of all, I am not Michael Jordan. First of all. And of course, I watched this documentary, and it's like best ever I ever watch. I don't know, like, I think many people here, they don't watch this because here's a lot of all business people, you know, it's like they all talk about money. And, uh, and about Michael Jordan, I think, like, yeah, it, this episode, like, this, this uh, moment, it's really touched my heart. It's really touched my heart, and uh, no, I don't think so. I don't why, think why so. Why not? Like, like, because uh, I don't know. A lot of things. A lot of things. A lot of things come to my mind, you know, like, first of all, because of my mother. First of all, because of my mother. And um, uh, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so leaves a little bit of open, though. It's not 100%. I don't think so. You said, I'm, you, said, uh, you, said, you, said I, you said, I'm not Michael Jordan, right? Did you say, I'm not Michael Jordan because you, you want to say, I'm living my life, and that's my life, that's his life? Or are you saying, I'm not Michael Jordan because you want to say, like, I'm not as great in my game as he was in his game? What do you mean by, I'm not Michael Jordan? Now you play a game with me? I am. I am playing a game with you. I, it's my, what I do for a living. It's my job. I think, like, mentally, we close. Maybe he's better, maybe, because... Um, maybe he's better because I'm his fan, maybe. Maybe that's why. Because like, you're what? Because I'm his fan, maybe. That's why I think he's better. And... Um, but I'm, I'm sure we close. We close. Everything what he say, everything what he was doing on this... Uh, uh, on this, all these episodes, like this is, I have this. And um, yeah, about comeback, I'm not sure. I'm like, no makes sense. No, for me, no makes sense. Maybe fans, of course, people want to see this. People want a drama. People want to like this movie keep continue. It's like, right now I'm full, you know. It's like, yeah. You know, it, uh, but. But he have no choice about one thing. He's a man and he's gonna train. You have to be strong. Zero compromise. Zero compliment. And he's like now he's like almost six and he trained every day and there is no choice. He's gonna train. Because if you're man, you have to be strong. Habib, absolutely. Question for you. Uh, what, do, what do you think, in, in America, you know, there's a lot of weird things going on with parenting, kids, what they're teaching in schools, and we'll, we'll get into that here in a minute, but what, what do you think is a father's role in a son's life, and what is a father's role in a daughter's life? Do you think those are two different roles? I think so. I think it's, like, completely different. Please. Uh, first of all, like uh, about schools, our kids spend like, uh, first of all, they sleep eight hours, right? They wake up morning, they go to the school, they spend there like eight, nine hours, and we don't know with who they spend time. Maybe these teachers, you don't even know what they're thinking, what they have on their mind, and you let them to give education to your kids, it's very dangerous. If you not agree with this, these teachers on your life position, but you let them teach your kids, and when they become 16, you want they become like you. This is don't work. It's have, you have to control who teach your kids. And a lot of people miss this. And... Um, wow. You know, it's like... A lot of crazy people, they're working in school too. A lot of, and they give education to your kids. But if you talk one and one with them, like, you're not gonna spend with them even five minutes. 
but they spend with your kids eight hours every day. What a point. You know, it's like very dangerous things. Yeah. You have to control this. And uh, about son and daughter, of course, we are not same. This is what I think, because woman is different, man is different. And, uh, and I think, uh, like, uh, man, man is like, like my son, like what I teach my son, I cannot teach my daughter. I'm like completely different with daughter and son. Maybe I'm a little bit strong with son, but I'm very open with my daughter. And, uh, and I don't know, I just, a couple of years ago, become father, brother. Why you push <laughs> What do I know? You bring your army <laughs> back from so many kids. Like, I think you have more experience than me to talk about this. A very technical question for you. I know you're a math guy, and, and this one may be a tough question for you. If, you. if you're uncomfortable answering this one, I'm totally okay with that. In America, we have a few hundred genders. How many genders do you guys have in Russia? You just very, I know you're a math guy, that's why I'm asking. I think maybe there's a. Here is like, I see only women and men. There is no, yeah. no between. Got it, got it. No between. Men the kids, you know, this is like, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like, first time in my life, a couple weeks ago, and I was in California, I was like, on coffee shop, it's like, I really want to go bedroom. It's like, can I go bedroom? Okay, they told me cold, and I'm coming like, two bedroom, all gender, all gender. It's like, what is this? Where I have to go? <laughs> first time I see it, like, I stop like, I, I, I stay like five seconds there, like, where's woman, where's man? I lock the door. <laughs> Anybody inside? <laughs> okay. It's like, I don't know, but I, I, I grew up in, uh, when in very traditional place, in very tra with very traditional family. I'm very happy with this. Like, I'm from big mountains, and we have only two gender. <laughs> well, you know, listen. That's, that's in the mountains. But when you live in cities in America, there's like 40, 50 genders. Because here, math is like uh, very important to them. So they kind of want to mess with it. It's like them. I have to be careful. <laughs> you have to be careful here. You know, you see numbers from us. We're not in Russia. We don't go to Russia. You see approval rating. You know, saying Putin's approval rating is 80 plus percent. Why do you think people in Russia love him so much? What is it about him that people in Russia love? You know, it's like in Russia, it's like if you have very small things, people happy. There is like people don't make like five, ten thousand a month. You know, it's like I talk about dollar, not rubles. And uh, it's like, I don't know like where I'm from, like from Dagestan. I'm from Dagestan. We don't need too much. Like, like, Dana asked me, brother, why you never ask me how much I'm gonna pay you to come back? I said, brother, it doesn't matter even if you give $100 million, it doesn't matter for me. You know why? Because I'm from Dagestan and we have traditional and we have, uh, we have, um, like, when we talk with our mothers, it's everything for us. This is everything. Like, I was talking with my mother. We make decision. We make the plan. It was, it's going to be my last fight. Like, finish. Like, uh, it's a uh, it's hard question. But we're completely different people, I think. Because I was... I was living there. I w I I am I'm, I'm living in U.S. since 2012, like more like 11 years. I know U.S. U.S. people's like mentality. I know Russian people mentality. It's like completely different people. And uh, but I really like people here. 
not on like not only Russian people. I really like U.S. people too because they all so nice people. They don't care about what happening in politics, games, everything. Like in regular, like people, like I go outside, like you, you know, this is only place where I can go outside by myself, drink coffee, sit er, like alone. It's like this is only one place. Even in Russia, in Dagestan, in like uh, Middle East, in Europe, I cannot go nowhere because all the time people bother me. But this only one country, I can wear whatever I want, cover myself, no mask. I go to the Starbucks, sit one hour, drink coffee, and enjoy with my life. <laughs> no. I love it. This is only one country. When there is, if you want to bring me like to political games, I I have I have chance to become like big political like working like this, but I don't want this, and everybody know this. I want to stay away from political because politics things never stop. It's always change. It's always never stop. It's like it's gonna be always some problems. These these things. I just want to be like a regular human, you know. If I can, people, I'm gonna help people, and I help people. If I cannot, brother, everybody have limits. Yeah. Even you, me, everybody. I was best in the world, but I have limit. Like with money, with our eyes, with our power, God give everybody's limit. Even if you have 150 billion dollar on your bank account, even you, Zach Zuckerberg, is gonna be Elon Musk, who's richer than you. You know. It's like, it's like uh, everybody have limit, you know? And I don't want to play political games. I don't want to do this. I just want to help people, inspire people to spend my time with my family, with my, with my mother, with my kids, and just being good, good person. And this is my goal. And so, uh, Habib, uh, um, you know, you said um, there is levels to fighting, right? And in, in the competitive space, there's a lot of different things. Like when it comes down to competition, one person could be better in skill sets, but mentally they're weak, or temptations, or habits, or distractions, or friendships, or picking the wrong coach, studying the wrong philosophy, getting... As you've gone from the levels of a kid learning how to fight to next level, to next level street fight, 17 years old, you, you know, boom, and then next, then you're champion, the, great, the best in the world. What have you noticed at each level where you're like, yeah, that guy's not, be able to, not gonna be able to compete because he's not willing to do X, Y, Z. What have you noticed at each level? <clears throat> you know, it's like in fighting game, they have, there is, there is levels. There, they have levels, for sure. Like, for example, on this arena, I was 23 years old and I have only one fight in UFC. And it was my second time in my life I see cage. Because when I was competing in Russia, uh, it was no cage, it was ring. And I was fighting versus 29 years old, 14 ranked in the world. He had 17 fights in UFC. And one of the best, he was one of the best of that time. I was fighting with Leyson Thibault, and it was like very tough fight for me. I win like unanimous decision, but this fight brings me on different level because I compete with him. We share cage together, and I beat him. I become on another level, and every fight can bring you on another level. If you between fights gonna learn, if you between fights non-stop and train, and. Uh, this is, I talk about experience, but they have, there is one more thing, like about your mental toughness. Because when you go to the cage, you have so many emotional come same time on your head. And you have to live this, they, every emotional they have separate places. But if everything come on your mind and this can make you weak, this can make you break, uh, this is, or this is can make you make you strong, you know? It's like uh, this, these things, uh, these things, uh, 
big difference between regular fighters and champions. And you know, and um, <clears throat> for example, it was 2012 here. And after six years, I fight neighbor in like neighbor arena, T-Mobile arena. It was biggest fight in UFC history. Like billions of people watch, and it was like big pressure. This guy, like you say, he was talk too much. You are talking about Khan? Like, yes, about I talk about Khan. Yeah. yeah, and it was like very big fight, and and it was like big pressure on me. And I remember when I was talk with my father, and he told me, "Hey, remember, you know how people make diamonds? Diamonds make it on under big pressure." If you can handle this pressure, you're gonna become diamond. And it was very good advice for me. I remember because he was, he was in Dagestan because he didn't have visa. He could not come to support me. I was here in Vegas. <coughs> I handled this, and uh, but I was cornering a lot of guys. I see a lot of fights, and and I can say like a lot of guys they broke before they come to the cage. Broke. Broke. But inside the, inside the gym, they are like beasts. But when time come, when you go to the arena, when 16,000, 20,000 people look at you, you cannot shine because they cannot deal with the emotion. You know, it's very hard to control because I think you have to burn with this. This is what I think. You think so? You can train yourself. You can, you can, you can have like, you can become like experienced fighter, train yourself, everything. But if you are not, if you don't have like this uh, mentality, like somebody gonna break you. So when Connor was saying what he was saying to you, were you, cause you were listening to what he was saying. You know how some people are like, they're acting like they're not listening. Like you were, cause he was to your left. You're listening and looking at what he's saying, and you're actually internalizing the words. Why are you doing that? Are you doing it because you need and want more rage to destroy him, or are you doing it because you actually are paying attention to what he has to say? No, I like to listen to people when they talk. It's very interesting because you can listen to them and you can understand where is their IQ. You understand what I mean? Yeah. If you are stupid, what you can do? You cannot do nothing. How you can, if you cannot ho handle with yourself, how are you gonna control myself? How, like, if you cannot you control yourself, if you, control, you if you cannot control your family, you have to be quiet. Just don't talk in front of a lot of people because they're gonna understand who you are. It's better don't talk, you know? And, uh, like, I was listening to him. Okay, maybe he says something like good things. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, it's like everybody make mistake. I was listening to take these guys like course, this, this, this. I'm like, okay, these kind of people, they never gonna beat you. This is two different level. You have to be a little bit, at least you have to be smart because when you go to the cage, there is a lot of things. Your head have to work, you know? And I will, when I listen to him, I understand his level.